Okay, Panupong. Yeah, you know, adding cast shadows is a little bit challenging. And um, as is adding in the value into a drawing, especially because we don't have anything in front of us to refer to. We're really just creating this out of, out of the air in a way, you know, using the formulas of perspective to create this sense of, you know, reality and depth and, um, you know, a scene in front of us. Um, so I think you've got a really good start here. So your shadows, uh, so I, this cast shadow, yes, this looks, this looks correct. And in terms of how you've drawn it, um, this, let me just grab my line tool here. So the table, I think maybe, maybe we need to uh, look at that a little bit. Let's just, let me just get a different line here. So we're going to go th through, what you can sort of imagine is that this is like a cube even though you've got legs here at this point, you know, sort of imagine it as a cube and, um, you know, cast. So we're going to cast outside of the compositional line here, which is okay. You can always do that. And then we're going to go down through the line here at the top. So this is the line I'm casting through right here. And so you can see that the shadow actually goes quite a bit further. This is the point where it will end. And then we can do the same thing here, right here. So let's go, we're going to go down through the bottom, just like you've done. And then we're going to go down through the top. And, whoa, see, can you see how far that goes? So this is actually where your shadow would be placed, right here. And then you can also do this corner one here to match up this, like connect this second dot that I have here. That would connect to whatever point you end up with here. Um, and this is like a little bit hidden right now, but it is going to also, you know, kind of creep back there. So this is actually the, the whole area. And then you could also connect down this point right here. So we're looking at the back leg on the left, go down again, trying to find out where that is. And okay, that's, so that's going to be where it connects up to pretty much where you have it. So this is you see the line here? This is the edge of the shadow on this side. It connects up here. Okay, okay. so I would just adjust that. Um, uh, and, um, you know, the only way to really learn how to cast shadows is just to practice it. Uh, you know, that's how I learned. I it's, it, and I, it's still an evolving process. I still practice it. You know, it's, it, it takes a little, it always takes a little bit of time to, to work on it. So, you know, keep practicing it. There's a lot of other um, tutorials out there on YouTube on casting shadows, really helpful ones. Um, but just, you know, put some basic shapes into, you know, a space, you know, just even cubes and just practice them. You'll really, really help. Um, okay, so moving on from that, this looks very nice shadow. This looks good. Um, I would just say, you know, keep working on adding more shade, in, you know, shade and shadow into your drawing. When you're working, you know, when you're adding this value, use one of the methods for adding the value that is talked about in the learning activities area. Let's just go back in there. Um, there's so many valuable resources in here. So uh, do you make sure to take advantage of it? Like, let's just go to shading techniques. This is a really good one. So everybody has a slightly different method of shading, and you can really develop your own method of shading. Um, but you can see in here, this area, that there's a lot of sort of different methods in general going in a kind of a more of a, you know, multi-directional method is going to create or scribbling method, stippling. Some people stipple. I like to stipple, but it takes a lot of time. But you can really kind of invent it. But it's the way to create um, a sense of depth in the drawing is to kind of go back and forth and have like di multiple directions, like cross hatching um, is a really good one. Um, and you want to avoid having these little bits of white in there. Um, so like ha because having a really dark color and a really light color beside each other won't um, create a very good shadow. So try to, so what you've done actually down right in here is actually a pretty good shadow where you started to really kind of develop more multiple area, you know, kind of blending it. Um, watch that your shadows, you know, don't get too dark. 
you know, like too black, because then they will, because shadows are, are a little bit more transparent. So like what you're doing here with the shading in here, in these areas, it's actually going to work a little bit better as a shadow, you know, kind of more blended. Um, start off, always start off light when you're blend, you know, when you're, you're creating a shadow and then build it up as you go. You know, you can always go darker. Um, okay, once you have done that, you want to go just go and sort of revisit all areas of your drawing, just adding value into most areas. So you want to, um, in general, unless your drawing is is a you know really dark space, but in general you're going to have about 10% of your drawing in the black area and 10% the white of your paper, and everything else is going to be in this range, in the values, the mid mid range values. So you just, and how to do that is you just kind of go through and start evaluating just like what you're doing, like what you've done here. You know, maybe you'd add more value in here since the light is not going to be directly hitting this surface. You know, it's going to be directly hitting this surface, this surface, you know, the ones you've identified. Um, but is it going to be, you know, as we move further away from the light, maybe it's going to get a little bit darker in value, you know, um, for your walls. You know, you want to blend those in as well, add some value. And thinking about, you know, where in terms of the light, where would the lightest areas be? Where would it start getting darker? Like maybe as we move further away from the light. Um, I think it's good to actually work back and forth between um, a real situation. Like if you have a room in your, uh, in your home that has a light, maybe some kind of standing light, we'll close the windows, doors, make sure it's, this is the only light that you have available. And then watch what happens in the room. You know, where does it get light? Where does it get dark? You can use that information in your drawing to help you, you know, figure out um, how you need to shade the drawing. I do that all the time. I find it really, really helpful. Like on your character, for example, this will be the light side. As we go around to the back of the character, you're going to start shading in this side as well. Okay, so just kind of keep working with that. Use the video tutorial. It's, I think for the video tutorial for this particular assignment is really good in terms of how to work back and forth and how to develop layers of shadows. So you go through like round one and round two, you know, until you start feeling like you really have, um, you know, covered every area a few times and analyzed it. Okay, so that's my uh, advice here. I think you're going in a good direction. You just keep going. Hey, Abigail, so I sent you an email just giving you my best tips and suggestions for, um, the, you know, understanding the material, and hopefully that will help. Um, and uh, I would just, uh, yeah, follow those tips. I mean, the main tips I really had in my email was make sure to use the practice exam in conjunction with the learning activities, and um, use the practice exam for kind of figuring out how much you know. Use the practice um, activities, make sure you go through each of those, and then practice. You know, practice along with the tutorial, especially for the previous um, tutorial for task one. You know, go through that a few times, you know, walk through with the, the person drawing to, you know, cast the shadows along with her so that you start getting the method down. Um, you know, and also use the learning activities area because there's a lot more material in there on casting shadows if that's what you're concerned about um, until you just start feeling more comfortable. Um, it's all... In our online classes, you know, that, that is the equivalent of our lecture or our instruction is our online materials that we have. Let me know when you have specific questions, too, that I can help with. But that's really the foundational materials. You know, you've got a two-point perspective here. So, you know, if you're still struggling a little bit with two-point, which I think you're, you know, you're doing okay with two-point, you know. You've got everything, I think, pretty much lined up, which is good. Um, but if you if you were, then you you know could go back to the unit two materials and just keep working on, or the milestone two materials and just keep working on those. Um, in terms of your cast shadows, um, I would just really follow along with the tutorial on how to cast your shadows. Um, you know, just making sure that you're using this light source to cast your shadows. You know, so there's your first point. And I'm just using, I'm, I'm using the exact method from the tutorial. And then here, you know, if we cast this shadow, we're going to cast into the wall, or pardon me, the, the unit here, and find that point of where we're casting, which is parallel, which makes sense. And then you would just keep going here, joining those points as you go through. Okay. Um, 
And just like I mentioned, I've mentioned last time, you know, add some rectangles right in the space here. Add a few more little rectangles, just like Amazon, you know, delivered a box. And so you've got a box on the floor and cast that shadow. That will really, I think, help a lot. In terms of understanding how to lay in the value, the tutorial we have for this particular assignment, task two, is really good for how to start evaluating your light source. Like in your case, you know, we have the light source. This is your light. So where on this shape would you see the light hitting it directly? Well, we would see it kind of hitting the light directly right on top, right? Right on top. So this would be the lightest area. But can the would the light rays be able to go around the side of this? Well, they can't. They can't. Like they would hit this end and sort of bounce onto the floor. That's why we get this cast shadow here happening here because the light can't go around. And so we would start seeing that this would be darker. This would be a darker area. Maybe this would be a little, um, you know, lighter because the light is now still going to hit this, you know, this side. So this is going to be lighter. But then back here, again, it's going to be darker. So it's just about trying to, you know, kind of imagine where is this light going to hit? How is it going to relate to the value study? Work on your value study down here a little bit more. This is going to be black. Fill it right in. Use the cross hatching or the stippling or whatever um, shading technique you like the best in learning activities and start exploring that. You know, uh, just keep working on this scale going from dark to light, black to white. And then just keep working on filling it in. Um, pretty much the same suggestion that I had for Panupong in terms of the walls. It just takes time. You just got to really sit down and practice um, and really study the materials um, until you still, you know, until you can start practicing it. And, you know, it, you may not get the best result the first time, but with time, with practice, it will just become easier. So that's what I'd recommend doing here. Courtney, yes, this box looks great with the cast shadow. That, it looks very accurate. Nice job with that. It's amazing how, you know, as we move further away from this light source, you can see that the angle gets longer. You know, the shadows do get longer compared to, you know, when we think of the light source hitting the sofa from here, it's going straight, almost straight down, right? That shadow. But when we get further away, we can see even just the angle of the light source. The light is, is really a lot, um, casting that shadow a lot further. So the length of the shadow really does change depending upon where the object is in relation to uh, the light source. So that looks really good. All of your shadows look really good. This looks really, really excellent. Um, it's already building a lot of dimension. So I would just say to keep building a little more dimension in here, keep evaluating the light source, um, as, you know, on the walls especially, you know, what's going to happen with your light source um, is which, you know, one of the walls is probably going to be the a little darker, one's going to be a little lighter, what, what's going to happen to the ceiling as we move further away. Just keep working on that. And just like I mentioned to Panupong, um, it's good to just find a, a situation in your own home, in a room, where you have some light that's a sort of similar placement, where you can close the rest of the windows up, you know, the windows or other light sources. So it's relatively... Um, isolated where you just have that one light source and then just see what happens in the room and you can copy that. Creating shadows, you know, when we create these cast shadows, um, when you have objects, that's where you can really do the formula with the cast shadows and the figures. Um, and uh, But when you work with some of the other areas, it can help to really bring in some of your own real life experiences to see how things work. So that's what I would keep doing. Um, and, you know, with this box here, you know, think about that. Where is the light going to hit? It's, it's definitely going to hit, um, the light's going to hit at the top and light up the top. So it's going to be quite light. But here it's probably going to be a lot darker, right? Maybe here it's going to be somewhere in between. So you can kind of keep playing with that with your figure. You can keep playing with the light and shadow on your figure. On this side of the figure, you know, where it's, the light's not hitting it, it's going to get darker all the way around uh, on the back. Um, think about your sofa. Maybe the front here is going to be a tiny bit darker. Maybe this side here is going to be a little bit darker than the top here. You know, the light, again, the light's coming right down here, hitting this directly. So this is going to stay just like how you have it pretty much. But maybe, again, these sides and, you know, here is going to be a tiny bit darker. So you can kind of keep, you know, just really just keep evaluating all the different areas. Go through and do another run through. Um, just like I mentioned before, about 10% of your drawing should be uh, the darkest color 
and about 10% should be white. I mean, of course, that's just a rule of thumb, but that can give you some idea of how much how much area you're going to be shading. You you know, basically you're going to be shading almost everything in the drawing at some point. Okay. Uh, just keep going. Sarah, all right, yeah. So uh, this is a really good element here. I really like what you've started to do here with, uh, you know, shading this side um, darker and this side lighter. It automatically tells us where the light source is coming from. You know, that information, and also the shadow from the figure, you know, casting right onto uh, the, um, the sofa. That's very nice. Um, oh, I like the way you close the blinds. That's excellent. Um, and um, yeah, so I would just say probably the same thing as other folks, you know, just keep working on adding a little bit more shadow through, you know, add your value scale down here, you know, from light to dark. And, uh, um, you know, keep working on what you're ideally trying to do here is to move away from the lines that created the object and replace them with value, if that makes sense. I think the um, our online, excuse me, my need to plug in my laptop. It suddenly decided to batteries a little bit low. Here we go. Stop. Okay, yeah. So um, add your value scale in. You know, moving from light to dark, uh, and um, you know, just keep moving away from using lines and moving, replacing them with value, like you start to do here. Sometimes what you have to do. Um, if your lines to create the objects are a little bit dark when you start with, you can sometimes need to just slightly erase them. You can use a kneaded eraser and just kind of like dab them a little bit. That's what I often do, um, rather than kind of erasing like this, which can somehow, sometimes that doesn't look so good, but dabbing it, like pressing your kneaded eraser into the lines to just lift it up a little bit um, will really, uh, I think, help. Like right here, can you see how you started to, the line is naturally disappearing here between this area and this area. And that's what starts giving you more of that realism is when you remove the lines. Not that having lines in a drawing is a bad thing. That's just kind of a style. But in this case, we're really trying to work with the, the a kind of a sense of realism. So like here, you know, kind of moving away from lines. Sometimes just adding more value onto the drawing can help minimize those lines. Like going through and doing another run through of your values, you know, again, sort of thinking about how What's going to happen with your walls and your ceilings? Um, you might start toning them a little bit, thinking about where the light source is. Even the light itself will have some tone, you know. Um, you know, like even if the light, it, if it's lit up, it's still going to be toned a little bit. It doesn't necessarily stay like a bright white. Um, okay, so that's what I'd work on. Is just adding in more of that value. 